क्वेश्चन है अब आ रहे ಗಣಪತಿಗುಂಭವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿ ಕವೀನಾಪಮಶ್ರಭಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಆನಶೃಣ್ಮನ್ನುದಿಬಿಸ್ಸೀದಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಮಃ ಶಿವಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಪಂಚಾ ಶಾಂತಾಯ ನಿರಾಲಂಬಾ ತೇಜಸೆ ಓತ್ಮೂತಸ್ತಿಗುರಪ್ರಸಾದ ಅಹಂ ವಿಮುಕ್ತಸ್ಮಿ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧಾತ್ ಸರ್ವೋಪದೇಷ್ಟು ಶಿವಾನಂದಮೂರ್ತೆ ಮೃದ್ವಾಗ್ರಯುಗ್ಮಂ ಪ್ರಣದಸ್ಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ದಯಾಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಾರ್ಥಬೋಧನ ಪಟು ಮಸ್ಕರೀಂದ್ರವರಂ ನೋಮಿ ಶ್ರೀಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಓಂ ಪ್ರಾಣಿ ದುಃಖಹರ್ತಾರೌ ಜ್ಞಾನದೌ ಭುವನ ಮುಕ್ತ ಶಿವಾನಂದಚಿದಾನಂದ ಆಶ್ರಯೇ ಗುರು ಸತ್ತಮ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಾತ್ಮನ ಪ್ರಣದ ಸುಲಭಂ ಸಿದ್ಧವಿದ್ಯಾಪ್ರಭಾವ ಬಾಸ್ವದ್ರೂಪ ಸುಗುಣ ನಿಲಯ ದ್ವಸ್ತಕರ್ಮಾಧಿವರ್ಗ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾವೃದ್ಧ ನಿಜ ಸಮದೃಶ ತಾರದು ತ್ಯಾಗಿಭದ್ಯ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಈಶಂ ಮಮ ಗುರುಪದ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದ ನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಓಂ number of questions are there i do not know how much time uh, i have and uh, and also i want to tell you that see the question answer session is for on sadhana so that the question will be useful to others what one asked the question the doubt one has that another person may also be having so this prashnottari should be useful to all people and technical questions and the social questions are not re- relevant here so those questions i i may not i will skip also so this is one such question what should be our attitude towards injustice and bigotry happening in the society communities are divided on religions and people commit crimes in the name of god uh, how we should act in s- such situation this if we believe that bhagwan has created this world then it is his responsibility to conduct itself the way he likes so we cannot change much we cannot even in your family you will not be able to make your son or daughter or some nearest relative suppose if there is they are doing something wrong you may not be able to correct it then why to think of about this big world and other things so the best way is to correct ourselves if you correct yourself then you will see with that i the world is beautiful <coughs> immanuel kant was a famous german philosopher and kant is not a man of faith he doesn't believe in god he did not believe in god but kant says the two things i look with wonder one is when i look up the starry skies i feel it is so wonderful the second one he says the <coughs> moral values in the mind of man 
So every one is basically good. No one is basically bad. Kant says, I look with awe and wonder the moral values in the mind of man. Mind you that he is an atheist, he doesn't believe in God and other things. So everyone is basically good. Everyone is basically divine. When you are born, you are divine. And later on, if any, anything we do wrong things, it is because Kama is the Kama and Krodha. Naham Karta Kama Karta. Naham Karta Krodha Karta. So if anyone is doing wrong, it is not. He is basically good. So the his the anger has made him to do that. The desire has made him to do that. So the world is very beautiful. Let us not worry about the world. We will think about ourselves. So if we become good, if you become good, when you see the world, it will be beautiful actually. Everything is beautiful here. Then this question is repeated by many people. How to overcome subtle forms of anger? Intolerance arising from persons, situations. So how to control anger and other negative attitudes? So the moment you recognize that something negative is there in the mind, it is Bhagavan's Kripa. <coughs> Whenever we, many times we will not be aware of the wrong things. If someone is doing wrong, he will not know that I am doing wrong. He will not be aware of it. So the moment one becomes aware that I am doing wrong, that is a gift of God. Bhagavan's Kripa, which is his Atma Kripa, that this, this defect is there, and that is the first step to correct it. <clears throat> there are alcoholics and drug addicts. And if you want to counsel an alcoholic or a drug addict, if you go and give him Upadesha, it will go like this. You will not be able to, you will not hear it even. Sometimes, some people will have some problems. The parents or close relatives will come and tell us, Swamiji, please advise him. That advice will go waste. Because that person is not, will not be receptive to that advice. First thing, he has to be receptive. In order to be receptive to that, he should recognize that I have this problem. Only then you can counsel him. So, if you realize that anger is there, then, then you are started counseling yourself. All other external counseling will be a waste. It may have little impact, but internal counseling will happen. The external counseling may sometimes induce your internal counseling. Something, but sometimes some people do wrong things. You have done something wrong. Then afterwards they come and Swamiji, that, that day you told me, that was 100% correct. That means he is correcting himself. So whenever we realize that there is something negative is there in us, then you have to ponder over that. And because already there is a desire to correct yourself, the correction will happen. If the desire is there to correct yourself is not there. If the sankalpa is not there, it will never happen. The moment you realize that something negative is there in, in me, then, then you have to <coughs> introspect on that and also pray to God. Because it is not easy to come out of it. You may be knowing that this defect is there, but it is not that easy to come out actually. That needs a lot of strength actually. That strength comes from that. Bhagavan means what? Bhagavan is there is sitting in your mind. Bhagavan is there in our mind actually. External Bhagavan is okay, but internal Bhagavan is also there. So the external Bhagavan will give you the strength to, 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 he will speak through the internal Bhagavan. 
Whenever he is, we realize that I am doing something wrong, it is the Bhagavan in you speaks actually. <coughs> so the moment you recognize, you have started correcting it and, and encourage that thought. Don't do anything opposite to that. Don't attend to anybody who is giving other advice. So sometimes other people will also influence. So don't, <coughs> that is why the Dusanga you should avoid, they say. <coughs> the company of Dusanga should be avoided because that will create problems. So when there is a good thought comes, no, 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 that is not required, somebody will advise. <coughs> this is the same question. How, how to control anger, how to get rid of alasya. Alasya, if you want to get rid of, then little fasting is required. Fasting should be there. Alasya comes because of overeating actually. So the food is reduced. Alasya will come, uh, will come down. And, uh, but also you should have the which one's body needs certain amount of rest. So you should not live in an imaginary uh, world. Certain, certain, each one's body needs certain amount of rest. You will be able to know how much rest you need. So if you have a regulated life, timely food, the timely exercise and unwanted thinking, if it is not there, naturally alasya will come through control. Usually when in the academy, our boys, they usually they go to sleep late and then when they join the academy and then what happens, four o'clock they will be, call bell will be there, somebody will go and wake them up. And then they go and sit in the meditation hall and they will have a sound meditation. The light will be off, so they will have <laughs> sound meditation will be there. And sometimes they sleep also. So they come and ask us, Swamiji, I am sleepy, what to do? Then go to bed early, go to bed early and they, uh, take the supper little early also. Seven o'clock supper and ten o'clock if you go to, then alasya can be controlled. And each one will have that practical suggestions they should have. I had visited your Shiva, I have visited your Shivananda Ashram. I met sannyasins and was very happy to see their selfless and egoless love and humbleness. I want to know, is it possible that if all the sannyasins devoted to Shivananda Ashram, their lives for spiritual development of people living in, the, in, in at least five villages in India, Coach sannyas, each sannyasi adapt to five villages. I think it would help in the spreading of spiritual revolution. That is your policy, it is not our policy. Ashram has got its own uh, aims and objects. So if this, is, who has written, I do not know. If this person has this idea, he has to work for that. It is not our idea. What I should do, I have to decide. Somebody should not decide on all this, what sannyasins in the ashram should do, should not be decided by an outsider. The ashram has got a policy and the person has also his own ideas. Actually. So each one has to work according to his ideas, not according to somebody's ideas. So this person may be, if he wants, he can uh, have his own ashram, he can also do that. So there is a question, what is Antakarana Chatushtaya? What is function of this Chatushtaya? So normally they say the Antakarana is, the, is made of, is of four functions actually. Manobhuti Ahankara Chitta, that in the um, uh, Nirvana Shatka also, Sakracharya says, Manobhuti Ahankara Chitta Ninaham Nacha Shrotra Jikve Nacha Grana Netre so, mana, buddhi, ahankara and chitta. So, according to the scriptures, the, it is mind only called by different names. 
or without any distinction, these are one, one terminology is used for other. Mana can be, mind can also mean buddhi, buddhi can also mean mind, and mana can also mean ahankara. So it is, without a distinction it is used. Sometimes for technical purposes, there are distinctions. Otherwise, Santakarana is one mind. So, for technical reasons, for explaining the Shastras, so there are, they make some differences. It is a functional difference, actually. So, the, according to the functions, they are divided, it is separated. Mana is that part of the Chitta or the Antakarana, which is always doubting. Chanchalatmika Mana, they call it as Chanchalatmika Mana. We have normally when Whenever we think anything, immediately we will think of the opposite. Early morning you wake up, open your eyes. Time you see, it is 4.30, little more I will sleep. The doubt comes whether I should continue to sleep or whether I should continue to get up. And whenever a thought comes, Naturally, there will be an opposite thought. Morning you have, you want to go for breakfast. Today, I'm not hungry whether it should go for breakfast or not. So always there will be, when one thought comes, the opposite thought will come. So that chanchalatva is the na nature of the mind, it is natural. So when a thought comes, the opposite will come. So in the, I usually quote this, in the, when we share the knowledge on Yoga Sutras, we quote this actually. The Shakespeare in this Hamlet, he says, to be or not to be is the question. So to be or not to be. So this type of chanchalatva, wavering aspect. Whenever a thought comes, we want to do something good, whether to do it now or afterwards, whether to do it or not to do it. So that Chanchalatva, that function of the Antakarana is what is called mind. Chanchalatmika mana. And when and the, uh, while the chanchala is there, when there is this analysis is going on, you come to a conclusion. So that that aspect, that function of the mind, which decides, nishchayatmika manaha, nishchayatmika buddhi. So that which decides is buddhi. And then it is, it is my decision, I did it. So people think like that. I, I, I like that. That Abhimana is there. Then sense of mind, mind and I. So that is Abhimana Atmika Mana. Chitta is, is this, which supports all these things actually. Chitta is the place, normally they say it is the place where it is stored. It, can, it is the storage and also it is the same. All the three together, we call it as Chitta also. So these are the differences normally said. So accordingly, the, 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 the chanchalatmika mana, nishchayatmika buddhi, and uh, abhimanatmika ahankara, chitta is that uh, a combination of all these things, or the support of all these things, we call it as chitta. <laughs> Five more minutes I will have. In the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, the character of Sthita Prajna or of man of steady wisdom is said, is it practically possible or theoretical concept? So, whosoever wants to do sadhana, whosoever wants to consider himself as a spiritual seeker, there are certain things which are not verifiable or what we cannot understand through our sensors, sense organs. So through all our knowledge is through the sense organs. The seeing, hearing, like that. So there are certain things, whether God is there or not. That question we cannot, we cannot find out with our intellect. Because God is not available to the sense organs. It is not a knowledge gained through the sense organs. It is not a pratyaksha vastu. So, whether sthita prajna is possible or not, that question does not arise because what we can't understand through the normal, through the sense organs, 
what we cannot normally understand with our intellect those things we ac accept that pramana of agama pramana they say so those who consider themselves as spiritual seekers they should have one quality that is called satta shastreshu guru vakyeshu satya buddhya patharanam satta so what the shastra has said what the guru have, has guru tells that you have to believe it actually bhagwan is there where is the proof bar bhagwan is someone asked we cannot say whether bhagwan is there or not bhagwan is there for those who believe if they don't believe bhagwan may not be there we do not know because for them he is not there so shastra we have to believe actually bhagwan sri krishna has said and all these rishis it has been so many people have believed all these things they believe it we are not the only people who are intelligent actually so shastra you have to accept actually shastra satya buddhi is required actually bhagwan says it is stita prakna lakshana is told by bhagwan and then shankaracharya has told specifically he anticipated this question shankaracharya has told that the stita prakna lakshana is, is is told those who study the scriptures and with the commentary they will know this stita prakna lakshana is told not to find out whether such a stita prakna is not is there or not whether x and y x y has has got that stita prakna lakshana whether it is a stita prakna or not a stita prakna it is not for that it is not a scale given to you to measure and find out whether one is a stita prakna or not it is told for once to do the sadhana these lakshanas are told for practice we have to practice these lakshanas if you practice you will become stita prakna especially sankracharya has mentioned this this is not a lakshana this stita prakna lakshana is told not to find out whether one has when one is there whether this man has got these qualities or not whether he has stita prakna or not not to find out for that these for abhyasa these lakshanas if you do abhyasa then you will attain that supreme knowledge you will have ishra darshana for that only it is told so stita prakna lakshana whatever lakshana they has told which we follow that if we follow that you will become stita prakna lakshana then once you get it then that is a proof and then as as you keep on practicing it you will find there is improvement in your own self i myself have be improved you you know that there is so much improvement in me my mind is not this what what it was and what it is now how i was how i am now so that progress you have achieved the peace you have the ananda you have the the qualities other qualities you have the desire from the mind to go away you become desireless more and more desireless all these things will indicate you give that is the proof that stita prakya lakshana what is told is 100% correct so i think my time is up i will with this i conclude one one or two persons asked some other questions i don't have time one person asked me whether karma yoga bhakti yoga jnana yoga all these things are being told which yoga how to know which yoga is suitable to me how to practice then i told that i will explain it in the during the this talk but i i don't have time but this much i want to say although there is karma yoga bhakti yoga jnana yoga all these things are told in bhagavad there is one one shloka which says bhakti paresha anubhavo virakti anyatra chaisha trika ekakala prabadhyamanasya tushti pushti chutapayu anukasam bhakti jnana vairagya karma yoga all these all these things are not separate compartments swami ji also told they are not separate compartments they are uh, what do you call they are each, each one has overlaps into the other also so they are there are so many areas which are common so in bhagavad they says this is, it comes in the ekadasha skanda bhakti paresha anubhavo virakti ranyatra bhakti jnana and vairagya will simultaneously develop as you keep on practice as you do, as you do sadhana these three jnana bhakti and kar, uh, the vairagya will simultaneously develop how they gives and to 
Suppose if one is hungry, and then if as he takes food with every morsel, he becomes more energetic, his hunger abates, and the happiness comes. As happiness comes from every morsel, and the hunger goes away, and the pushti, the strength also he gains. Likewise, the bhakti and jnana and vairagya will simultaneously develop as when you as you practice. Any one of these, the karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, whatever it is. With these words I conclude. Manaso vrittayo nasyu krishna padam buja shraya vajo bhidai nirnam nam kayastad prakvanadishu karma bhir brahmyamana nam yatra kwa bhishwari chayam mangala jaridai danehi ratirna krishna ishwari bhave bhave yatha bhakti padayos tabajayate tatha kurushwa devesha natastum no yatha prabho nama sankirtanam yasya sarva papa pranajanam pranamo dukkasamanaha tam namami hajimparam tam namami hajimparam